Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be talking about the premiere episode, aka episode 1 of Season 8, aka Armageddon Part 1. So this is a huge episode, not only because it is a premiere, but it's the first of the five-part crossover event that began just tonight. So super excited to talk about all of this. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into my review slash breakdown. Obviously we're gonna go over every single point throughout this episode. And remember guys, if you want to stay up to date with the flash, please be sure to turn on notifications on my channel and subscribe if you haven't because we're going to be doing reviews and videos every single day pretty much whilst the flash is running obviously we've got five weeks now of the crossover you're definitely not going to want to miss out on any content i should have a trailer breakdown for episode two of armageddon out later tonight so yeah let's start with this so despero shows up at the start of the episode he disappears using his belt basically setting up the threat of him and we'll get back to despero because there's a lot later in the episode but at the start, we're kind of back to normal. It's six months later. That's the time gap. And it begins with Barry and Caitlin. They're just casually walking down the street, just as friends. And so at this point, Barry and Caitlin both go into jitters. They sit down for a coffee. Then Barry has to speed off and he saves this train and he does it at record speed. And he also heats up Caitlin's coffee. It's really impressive. And Caitlin mentions how he's basically powered up and he's leveled up is the thing that they keep on saying throughout this episode and so it's true Barry's powers are at a very high point as emphasized later in the episode when he's taken down the Royal Flush gang but we'll move on to that in just a second so yeah the start of the episode you have that is a nice little scene with Barry and Caitlin and then we move on and we are reintroduced to Virus obviously this is her first scene in this season also Kramer returns which we were told about over the break. So she does an interview with Kramer and she's come to accept that she's now a meta and basically she goes against everything she once stood for with the meta task force and now she's basically an advocate for metas which is nice to see and it's great to see that she's kind of come round to this and has turned a new leaf I guess. And so it turns out Iris has a new podcast but this isn't the only new thing that Iris has got. She's got three new reporters, I believe, and a bunch of interns, and she's renamed the company from Central City Citizen to Central City Citizen Media, so they keep on saying CC Citizen Media, and I have to say it's a bit of a mouthful, CC Citizen Media. I get what they're going for with the alliteration with the three C's, however it's a little bit hard to say when you say it out loud CC Citizen Media rather than something like Central City Citizen Media. It's still a bit hard to say, but I would say it's a bit easier than CC Citizen. It just sounds a bit weird. I don't know if that's just me. Every time they said it, I was like, what? Uh, yeah, this doesn't like completely gel well with my ears, but maybe that's just me being nitpicky. It's not a big problem really at the end of the day. But then we have a conversation between Iris and Allegra is reintroduced this season. And Allegra is surprised that she's promoted at CC Citizen Media and she's going to become one of the editors. I forgot what specific role. Anyway, she's at a higher standard and she's got these new three reporters and they think they're big shots and she isn't able to control them throughout this episode until the end when she puts her stamp on it and basically says, look, this is not your normal kind of outlet and we need to make an impact by not only interviewing you know the top guys but interview the bottom guys and report for the citizens as the namesake of the company is okay so we have the return of ray slash the atom he shows up completely out of nowhere and this happens just after barry and iris come together in their flat barry's got like this really nice pizza apparently and he's planned this whole romantic dinner and basically in this scene there's a couple of important references that we need to bring up before we fully go into the ray showing up once again and that is that dion is still treating iris for her time sickness so the time sickness is going to be a whole big thing throughout the rest of the season it's been confirmed by eric wallace the showrunner that's going to continue onwards and this was just a reference to remind people oh this is coming 
Also, these other references are just reminders, and these aren't probably going to be dealt with during Armageddon, so don't expect them in the next five episodes. But they also reference that they're still trying for a kid. This is going to be a thing that's going to continue. However, it's going to be kind of put on the back burner only because they're going to be so busy with Armageddon. And they also reference how Bart and Nora keep on showing up out of nowhere and stopping by from 2049 which is obviously quite the surprise. I feel like I picked up the dialogue right. I swear they said that. I could have interpreted it wrong. Maybe that's just me hearing it wrong. But it does make sense that Bart and Nora keep on showing up because, you know, they kind of disappeared after the end of last season and we're expecting them to return because we've seen behind the scenes photos. So it's nice to see that they are returning even if it's just like randomly showing up and, you know, they don't really care about the timeline at this point it seems or... You know, there is a way for them to do it kind of safely. But anyway, let's go on to talk about Ray. So Ray returns and it's great to see Brandon Ralph back on the show. Really do think he should stick around on the Flash. I think he fits the Flash, Team Flash as a whole, so much better than Legends. I know that's just me and my prejudice against Legends right now. And I mean, he's obviously not on Legends anymore. And I feel like this was one of the shows where he first showed up on. Obviously, he's an Arrow character primarily. But like, I feel like he really gels well with Chester, but also especially Barry, of course. And that's just the kind of guy he is, I guess. You know, he has similar interests to a lot of the Team Flash members. Okay, so we get the reintroduction to the cringy gang from Season 1, aka the Royal Flush Gang. And now this is my biggest complaint about the episode, and I feel like it's always the big bad of the episode, you know, the villain of the week in this case, with the Royal Flush Gang, who is definitely the downside to the episode. So they come in, they're about to do this heist, and they say tons of chess puns, and I mean, like, it's my queen, jackpot. Like, I could go on for days, but they said about ten in a row, and I was like, oh my god, guys. And also the costumes are really bad, like, really cringy. Very, very obvious, and I feel like that was them kind of cashing in on the idea of them being like a chess kind of set of villains. And they're like, yeah, let's go full in. But it's definitely too much, I would say. So I don't know if you guys agree with me or not on that. Let me know in the comments down below. After this, Barry shows up at the crime scene. He's there with Kramer. They have a little chat. And obviously Barry is figuring out, is Kramer going to suddenly turn into a speedster once again just because she's around Barry? So, you know, he's kind of sussing her out and how her powers work. And obviously his mind is kind of set at ease. As long as she's not put on edge, she's not going to take Barry's powers and figure out that he's the Flash. And so Barry calls the Royal Flush Gang, who he remembers as the OG Metas. That's what he refers to them as. And so there is a flashback to when he was in the coma. And, you know, the newspaper which talks about their crimes back then. And obviously they've developed and it's pretty much come to a conclusion by the end of the episode that they've got the exact same MO, however they've just leveled up. And that is just the second level up reference in this episode. So they hit a manor of places, they also hit Iron Heights, they kidnap a person from there who is able to help them with their plan. And, you know, their full plan is exposed later in the episode once they get to their final checkpoint where Barry actually takes them down. But the CC Citizen employees are bare annoying, they're so annoying. That's what happens next after the scene with Barry and Kramer. And so then you get like, without Iris, just them in the office and it's Allegra and the new employees and she's trying to obviously impose her new authority over them being like, this is the articles that we want to get but, you know, they're having absolutely none of it, mainly just due to the fact that they think they're better journalists and they don't need to listen to someone less experienced than them. However, you know, this goes on its head later in the episode because she imposes her new role as one of the editors of CC Citizen Media. And so this is when we get Ray meeting Chester, very priceless. Chester is a huge fan. They talk about the convention that they're going to appear at and Ray's priorities he reveals is not what Chester originally thought and Ray is just trying to find a balance in his life because he's not a legend anymore he doesn't believe he should be you know creating a scientific company where he's making all of these breakthroughs 
However, his mind is changed later in the episode by Chester, which is great. So, it's also referenced that Allegra has leveled up. We get a flashback to her episode, you remember, in the interlude earlier this year. And as mentioned with the Royal Flush Gang, with them leveling up, that is the third mention of leveling up in this episode, and I feel like they're really hammering it home, and I think it goes one step too far. At first, it was fine with Barry. I thought, yeah, that makes sense. Like, Barry has leveled up. But then by saying, oh, you know, Allegra's leveled up, now Royal Flush Gang is leveled up, and saying the exact same wording, I feel like it's just them being like, yeah, haha, look at this. We're saying the exact same wording because everyone has leveled up. I don't know, I felt like that was a weird writing choice to repeat it three times in a row, literally, like, within the span of, like, five to ten minutes. It was pretty weird. Anyway, that's just like a small nitpick of mine throughout this episode. But Barry goes in the final fight scene with the Royal Flush Gang, and he confronts them, and he outthinks the psychic, you know, the leader of them, the Queen, I think they refer to her as, by reshuffling his deck slash his mind is what they actually mean, and obviously this is because of his thinking at super speed, and this is something that she didn't anticipate, and he literally walks around them in super slow-mo, and obviously this is like an extreme version of Flash Time, and this is because he has leveled up and he is faster than he's pretty much ever been. So it was a great scene, I really liked the CGI, I thought it really worked with just Barry like walking around, the lightning kind of slowly coursing out of him and him taking these people down and repositioning them and you know eventually putting the cuffs on all of them. Okay, let's move on to the next scene. We have Barry and Ray at the convention center. Barry reveals that his mind is at ease and, you know, he's better as the Flash and also he's better as a CSI because of all the developments he's made within himself recently. And Barry also inspires Ray to invent something new and this comes with what happens next with Iris interviewing Ray at the convention. Obviously as a Q&A kind of panel thing with like a whole bunch of people watching in the audience and he reveals that he is ready for some new things and so he reveals his new intentions and that he's going to return next year and obviously he'll return next year with a big new plan on what he has created. Obviously this is a pretty big confirmation that Ray is going to show up again on The Flash sometime in Season 9. I would also take this as pretty much confirmation that they are already thinking of Season 9 and the storylines because I don't think him saying, you know, I'll return next year is just a random one-off mention. It's definitely meant with intent, and they probably have discussed this behind the scenes. So I think Ray's going to turn up next year, and he's going to be different, and he's going to be advanced from where he's at, and obviously where he left this episode off at. Okay, so at this point, at the convention, breaking up Iris and Ray's Q&A panel is Despero. He appears out of nowhere and he confronts the Flash, commanding him to appear and he reveals that he's come to kill Barry. It's also confirmed in the scene that I don't think Despero has actually seen Barry before because he says he's not the person that he expected and obviously this is because of what he knows Barry as in the future. It's also revealed he has mind control and he has some sort of manipulation of people's minds and you know what they can see because this is emphasized when the Atom and the Flash both face off against Despero and they're kind of like where is he and then Iris is like over there and so he appears in a completely different spot but there is one big line that I need to read out and that I jotted down because I think it's very important he says those who are once good die just as easily and this is obviously a reference to Barry turning bad. So I would argue this is the biggest revelation of this entire episode, even bigger than just Despero showing up, because this is confirmation of what Barry's going to be struggling with throughout Armageddon, and it's the idea that he's going to become this dark figure, he's going to become an evil version of himself, he's going to become pretty much like Reverse Flash and cause an Armageddon and destroy the entire Earth, and this is apparently set to happen 10 years in the future. At this point, or at some point in the very near future, Barry will begin and enact this Armageddon. And so we also have another form of leveling up. We have Despero who shows up in his human form first, but he soon transforms into his huge, like, 10-foot version of himself, 
and he has great CGI. I have to mention, I think that is the best CGI that the show has ever done for a character who basically is a humanoid, but is an alien and looks different and has human expressions. I think it looks really good and very convincing. I actually think it's better than King Shark or anything. I think it's on par with Grodd. Definitely those two are the best so far. So yeah, good on them. I think Despero definitely looks really good. And obviously that was a big question mark going into the Armageddon crossover. Would the CGI version of Despero actually look good? And it does. So during this fight, we have Atom and Ray finally suits up as the Atom once again to fight alongside the Flash. It's so awesome to see him fighting alongside the Flash. Like I said, I want him to stay around as long as possible, if possible. But yeah, they fight Despero and while Atom goes in for a sneaky final takedown, we have Barry who creates a speed mirage which basically stalls Despero and Barry also becomes small at one point and he's like, I know what Diggle feels like, which I thought was a really funny line and I really like that small little moment when they turn small. But you know, the idea of Barry being this kind of evil version of himself who causes this Armageddon that destroys the Earth in the future is revealed via Despero's third eye which shows Barry a vision of Armageddon and so he sees part of this future, obviously not everything of this future. But Destro also mentions that he's trying to save the planet and the fact that he actually lives on Earth in the future and it pretty much confirms he's a time traveler. So we could expect some time travel definitely in the next few episodes, possibly with Barry going to the future to try and track him down. And with the Atom actually taking him down, we don't know where he specifically is going to show up next, but it could be absolutely anywhere. But we know he's at least from 10 years in the future or so and maybe Bart and Noah have some information about this, but again, they're not going to show up in Armageddon, they're going to show up after Armageddon. Okay, so they take him down and then we cut to the next scene and they're back at Star Labs and Barry believes that he's the bad guy, obviously Team Flash doesn't believe this and Ray suggests very smartly that they figure out the alien race that Despero is from and basically find his kryptonite, obviously a Superman reference right there with Brandon and Ralph mentioning Kryptonite, which was very cool. And obviously it's a very smart idea and we're gonna figure out what his weakness is. At this point, Ray also leaves, which is a very sad moment because Ray was so good in this episode. I loved Brandon and Ralph. He was definitely a great replacement for having no Cisco. I didn't really feel the no Cisco thing just because Ray was there. And obviously maybe we'll feel it in the next couple of episodes, but at least Chester is somewhat similar. And at the point that Ray leaves, he reveals that he's going to create a foundation in Chester's father's name, which I thought was very touching. And it's great to see him attack a new project. And again, if Ray does return next year and if Random Ralph shows up, we're going to see a continuation of that. And we're going to find out what he's been doing over the past year with this new non-profit organization, obviously to help young scientists. Okay, let's move on to the ending scene. Barry faces Despero. Barry baits himself out and draws Despero in to show Despero that he's not afraid of him. And basically at this point, Despero is like, it's no fun to kill you like that. And obviously this hints that maybe he is a villain after all, despite him thinking of himself as a hero. And I think we're all pretty sure that he is an actual villain, but he sees himself in a certain light, but maybe he would have questioned himself if he killed Barry just there on the spot. But the big reveal, which isn't a huge reveal, is that Barry reveals his identity because he has nothing to hide from Despero, that he is Barry Allen, aka The Flash. And obviously he's done this many, many times recently and in the past, but it's a kind of big gesture to show that he's not afraid of hiding anything to Despero. And at this point, Despero reveals that Barry has seven days to prove himself and that is going to be the span of the Armageddon crossover, seven entire days in five episodes. Obviously we've got four episodes left from this episode onwards. And so if Barry goes into the darkness and if Despero spots any darkness, he's going to kill Barry. And so Barry is going to be questioning himself and he's going to have to prevent himself from becoming the person who creates Armageddon in the future. But that about does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any videos. Thank you for watching 
this flash review obviously we're gonna have episode 2 trailer breakdown out later today and next week remember straight away after the episode airs episode 2 of Armageddon and episode 2 of the flash season 8 we're gonna be reviewing so for now thank you guys so much for watching you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but I'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.